Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, or good night. Whatever time you're watching this, this is a day that the Lord has made, and we, I need some partnership there, shall rejoice and be glad in it. Before I go any further, before we wrap the week up, thank God it is Friday. Before we do that, let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for another day. I thank you for life, health, and strength. Lord, please forgive me of all my sins and give me what to say to these, your precious people. I don't take this opportunity or this time lightly. And I ask your blessings in the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen and amen. Good morning, Evangelist Thomas. Good morning, good morning, good morning. And before we go any further, I want I wanted to, to, to share something that when we had our evangelism meeting, that Evangelist Thomas shared, that she said she supports people because she's encouraging them. And that really meant a lot because in this day and age, we need some encouragement. Everybody needs encouragement. And when she said that, she was really speaking to the heart of Christianity. Because as Christians, we are a body. We're a body of believers. And when the shoulder gets sore, guess what? The other shoulder shouldn't feel happy. But the other shoulder should say, hold on, if, if this shoulder hurts, I'm hurting. That's what it comes down to. We're a body of believers. Okay, we're imperfect. Nobody's perfect but Jesus Christ. We're imperfect, but we have to encourage each other. We have to love on each other. And we have to, we have to stretch ourselves to continue to get the word of God out there. That's what it's about. It's about telling somebody. That's what it's about. It's about telling somebody. And I just want to give you a shout out. Evangelist Thomas, because you always have encouraged me when we were doing evangelism. I'm going to just use this time for a little bit, then we're going to get right into the word. When we were out evangelizing, our president, evangelist, our Linda Thompson, we, we'd go out in the neighborhoods before the pandemic and all that. We would go out and we would share the word of God. We didn't beat you over the head. We would say, hey, God bless you. Hey, we got something with you. Do you know Jesus? It wasn't, come here, come here. You're going to take Jesus right now. That's not what it's about. The Bible tells us with loving kindness, have I drawn thee? So guess what? If I'm talking a harsh tone and all that, you don't want to hear that. So we have to we have to watch our tone. Well, that's just how I am. Well, yeah, if you have kind of a harsh and a gruff thing, guess what? Maybe that's how you are. But we press towards the mark so you can get a little softer on that. Okay? That's what it comes down to. We're all helpers one to another. Okay? And that's, that's what I, I want to just plant that little seed before we go into another seed that I'm getting ready to talk about. I'm going to talk about something that's very important. Something that if we don't have, we can't please God. What am I going to talk about? Let's go to Hebrews, which is a familiar, most Christians have, have read this. Hebrews, the 11th chapter. Let's go all the way to... Um, Let's go all the way to verse 8. So we're going to go 11 chapter 1 through 8. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it el the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it, he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found, because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. Okay? It says in the sixth verse, but without faith, it is impossible to please please him, for he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. By faith Noah, being warned of God, of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world, and became heir of the righteousness which is by faith. Okay, let's go to eight, and then we're going to go, and we're going to try to break these down. Eight, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, after receive for an inheritance, obey and went out, not knowing whether he went. Let's stop right there. If I had to have a topic today, 
it would be you've got to have faith. I'm not talking about the the, the popular R and B song, the George Michael, the late George Michael song. I'm talking about you really have to have faith. Because you've heard me say before, without faith, it's impossible to please God. It said it right there. So that's what I'm referring to when I say we have to have faith. We have to have faith. What is faith? Looking at faith, faith is the belief in something. So guess what? When I sat down this morning, I just plopped down on the chair. So guess what I exercise? I exercise faith. I have more faith in this product that is made by an imperfect being like me to sustain my weight whether it go up or down, how no matter how hard or with how much force I sit down on it. I had faith to just plop down. I didn't ease down and look at everything and look under to see if any of the legs were cracked. I just plopped down. Faith. We have more faith in inanimate objects. We have more faith in things that we make than in God. An all-knowing, all-powerful, all-loving, the Creator. He created us. He knows how many hairs I have on my head. Yeah, you're probably saying you don't have any. Yes, I do. It's, it's, it's something up here. God knows the exact number. And if he took enough time to number our hairs on our very head, it says it in the Bible. I'm not making any of this up. This is not coming from the book of Robert. This is coming from the Bible. Now, let's dive into this without faith. Okay? Without faith, we heard that it's impossible to please God. Without faith, you've got to have faith. So it says here, now faith is the substance of things hoped for. Let's stop right there. The substance, the very makeup. Faith is what, it's, 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 it's the substance. When you think about substance, well, what, what is this made of? What does it consist of? We know that water, we learned very, very early in school, water is two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. H2O, water. We know, so what is the substance of water? It's two parts hydrogen, one part oxygen. That's the substance, the makeup. It says, now faith is the substance. It's the makeup of things hoped for. So if you see it, you don't have faith in it. Okay, I'm glad it's some things that I can't see because the Bible tells me that things that I can't see are eternal and things that I can see are temporal. So guess what? If I have a whole lot of debt, and we're all suffering with some debt. Let's use something natural that we can all relate to. If I have a lot of debt and I can see that, that's temporary. That's temporal. Okay? But I can't see heaven just yet. So that's eternal. Guess what? I can't really see hell. That's eternal. I gave you two examples of the two destinations. We're going to one of, one of two. Heaven or hell. So we're talking about here. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence... So we have substance, now it's some evidence, okay? The substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. So when I have faith, I have the substance, I have the makeup, I have all the material for the evidence of things that I haven't seen. So the Bible tells us here in John 3, 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth, believeth faith, Okay, go hand in hand. Believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Okay, that's a promise that God has made for us. He sent his son in the physical. He wrapped his word up, which is Jesus. He wrapped his word up in flesh. And God's word, Jesus, he was here. He wrapped him up. He sent him for us. So without faith, it is impossible to please God because it tells us right here. Now, faith is the substance of of things hoped for, my makeup, the, the all the materials that go with it, okay? And it's the evidence of things not seen. So guess what? I can't see it, but if I have faith, if I have the substance, if I have the material, then I have the evidence. So faith works like this. Faith is the substance, the material. Okay, it's right here. I, can, I just need a little of it because God says all we need is faith of a grain of mustard seed. And a mustard seed is about, about yay big, about that big. Because I want to make sure I put it right on the screen. I didn't want to go all over. But it's about that big. If you have that much faith, it says you can move mountains. Okay? Faith. Now, faith is the substance. For by it, the elders obtain a good report. And we want to get a good report. We don't want to have no, well, when we stand before the, the, the judgment seat, and we're like, well, Lord, you know, well, did you have faith? Well, you know, um, 
Um, I, I had faith in the things I could see, but it doesn't say faith is something in the things that you can see. It says now faith is the substance of things hoped for. I'm hoping for eternal life. I believe that God sent his son Jesus to die for me. I've accepted Jesus and I'm hoping I have faith for eternal life. Okay, that is the evidence of things not seen. It didn't say, yeah, um, here's how eternal life looks. Here's heaven and all that. You can physically see it, and you have to do this and this. That's not how faith works. Okay? We're going a little further. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. Now, let me park right there. Because a lot of people in science say there was a Big Bang Theory. Oh, you know, all of a sudden, bam, the universe came into being. That is true. When God said, let there be, bam, it came into being. That ties in. They don't even understand that they're, they're lining right up with the word of God. When God said, let there be light, there's light. Because he's God. And he's God all by himself. Okay? Let there be light. Bam. There's light. Okay? So here we go. It says, by, it says through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. It said worlds. It didn't say world. Worlds, plural. So all the stars, all the planets... When God said, let it be, it, it was. Okay, we're going a little further. So the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. Okay? So we go a little further. By faith, Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. Let's park right there for a second. We know that Cain and Abel were the first two, were the first two. Oh, good morning, Evangelist Paul. Good morning, good morning. I, I got the Evangelist team with me. Yes, amen, amen. Okay, so, and I, I do pay attention to the screen every now and then. Okay, so, we know that by faith, by faith, okay, it says Abel offered an excellent sacrifice. Okay, how did that happen? God told them what type of sacrifice they had to do. Now, Cain and Abel, this is what happened. Adam and Eve, we'll just do a quick, quick history on it. Adam and Eve sinned. How did they sin? I didn't say, oh, the woman ate the, the fruit first. Doesn't matter. The law was given to man. Adam, the day that you eat this, you shall surely die. Fruit on the, of the tree of knowledge and good and evil. It didn't say it was an apple. didn't say it was a pear. It said it was fruit. And that's all we need to know. Doesn't matter what type of fruit it was. It was fruit, okay? From the knowledge of good and evil, okay? When they ate that, they created high treason against God, and they separated themselves with sin. So when they did that, okay, now anybody who is born is born in sin. So they had two children. Started off with two children. Cain was the first one. That's the oldest boy, okay? Tiller of the ground. That's what he was. Abel kept the sheep. They were supposed to offer a sacrifice. Abel did it in the right spirit. He said, well, Lord, here's, here's my sacrifice. Please be pleased with this. I have faith that you will be pleased with this. Here you go. Cain begrudgingly gave, well, I don't know why I have to do this, this, that, and other, if you let me paraphrase that. That was the attitudes. See, so faith is not just the substance of things hoped for. It's also the attitude that we have. God bless you. Is that, is that Pastor Brooks? Wow, I got my pastor online too. I, I, this is a good day, okay? I get excited, okay? Sometimes you got to pray with me that I, that I calm down a little. So let's get back into, now faith. We're saying the topic of this is you've got to have faith, okay? We're going a little further. And now here we're hitting where the meat and the potatoes are, they like to say. But without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Okay? Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Let's go natural again. I know as a child, when I was a little child, if my parents would tell me, hey, we're going to go to the moon after, after school, I believe we were going to the moon. I didn't need any more proof. I didn't need to say, well, how can we go to the moon? How do we believe out in space? That's an example of faith. We have to have faith like that in God. Think about it. This morning, we got up. It was just the right amount of oxygen. 
Okay, we got up with the activity of our limbs. We woke up with the right mind. He clothed us in a right mind. That is a blessing. We don't know exactly how God does it, but guess what? We got up, and guess what? We have to give him praise. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We have to have faith, and we have to have the right attitude. We have to have an attitude. Oh, Lord, I thank you right now. I don't know how I'm going to make it, but guess what? I thank you that I am going to make it. I'm speaking those things as though they were. The Bible tells us we can do that. We can speak those things as though they were. Life and death are in the tongue. We have to have faith in that. Life and death are in the tongue. Guess what? If I say, you know what? My church is a blessed church. And I continue to say that and I have faith in that. Guess what? My church becomes blessed. If I say, guess what? You know what? My family is blessed. They're blessed going out and they're blessed coming in. Guess what? When we have that faith, that triggers something. Because it says without faith, it's impossible to please God. We have to have that faith, that makeup, that substance. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. That's what it's about. I feel like I feel like tuning up a little this morning because without faith, it's impossible to please God. We've got to have faith. And you know what? We can have so much faith that we can have faith for others. Let me say that again. We can have so much faith that we can have faith for others. Well, where are you going with that? Okay, I'll tell you where I'm going. If we jump all the way back into the Old Testament, Moses sent 12 spies. Out of the 12, 10 had bad reports. Oh, the people are giants. Oh, we're, we, we're like grasshoppers in their sight. We, we can't do this. I don't know why God brought us out here. This is, this is too hard for us. Okay? But Caleb had to still the people. Now, Caleb was not the leader. Joshua was being groomed to be the leader. Caleb. The number two man said, hold on, we are well able. I know what you're saying, I know what these eyes see, but God has given me some spiritual LASIK. And if you know what LASIK is, that means you have some type of surgery to correct your vision where you no longer need these. Okay, God has given me some spiritual LASIK and we are well able to take the land. We're well able to take the possession that God has given us. That's how we need to start having faith. We need to have faith for everybody. Guess what? It said all we need is a grain of mustard seed. And we can say to a mountain. Jesus said this. It's in red. It's in the New Testament. Jesus said if we have faith of a grain of mustard seed. So guess what? We don't need a lot of faith to start. But the older we, we get, the, the more we're in God's word, the longer our relationship with us is with him, we should, our faith should increase. I've known him as a healer. Okay, I'm not talking something I've read. I'm talking something I've experienced. I was diagnosed. I'll share my testimony today. I was diagnosed as a young child. I'll say probably seven or eight with spinal meningitis. If anybody want to look that up, I'll tell you what happens. With that, you're not supposed to be able to walk. You're not supposed to have a, a long life with that. Okay, thank God next month I'll be 52. Guess what? I was able to walk. I played football, I ran cross country, I was in the United States Air Force. That's not my, anything that I should be, you know, that's all glory to God. God stepped in and healed me. I remember the late Bishop King was my pastor. He came and prayed for me, and I was healed. And my mother said, well, they thought you had, I said, I know I had two spinal taps. I know that, and that was painful. I was diagnosed with, that's what the diagnosis was pointing to, but that was not what God said. God said, live on, walk on. Yes, I thank God that I have known him as a healer. I know him as a way maker. I know him as a provider. Okay, and even though right now during this pandemic, things look a little grim. We've lost loved ones. We can't grieve like we want to grieve. But guess what? God is still able. I'm here today to encourage you and stir up your pure mind to let you know that God is able. Because we've got to have faith. We've got to have faith. And we sometimes have to have faith for everyone else. Oh, I, I, I'm excited this morning about this. We've got to have faith. Let's go a little further. It said, by faith. Let's talk about Abraham. They talk about Abraham, the father of faith. That's what we like to nickname him. It said, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should, after receive for inheritance, obeyed and went out, not knowing whether he went. Now, that's some type of faith. God says, hey, I'm ready to do something for you. I need you to go. 
And you say, okay, here, let's, let's go, Lord. Think about that. That's some type of faith. First thing we want to do now, we get, oh, well, uh, I'm a little older. Um, my credit's a little, little suspect. Um, I have a family. Um, 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 um. We um our way right out of God's will. God has given all of us gifts, and it's time and day that we stir up our gifts, get excited, and execute on that faith. And let's shake this world up. Let's go ahead and let's, let's, let's get as many people as we can to go to heaven. That's what it's about. We have to have faith. You've got to have faith. Okay? We need to have so much faith that when we go out every morning, we should say, Lord, I know you're going to put at least 10 souls in my way. 10 souls, 10 people who want to say an everlasting yes, but haven't had it presented to them. We should have that type of faith. Okay, and if you say, well, 10 is a little short, I, I want to say 100. Say 100, say 1,000. Okay, we we read in the Bible where it says, you know, such were added to the church as should be saved. Okay, on the day of Pentecost, 5,000. Okay, God can do 50,000 in a day. He can do 500,000 in a day. We are limiting God. It's time for us to take the limits off because we have to have faith. Let's have faith today. Okay, and, and, and now I want to just say, if you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, I want to say in the pardon because a pardon means, guess what? You've been forgiven. If you don't know Jesus in the pardon of your sins, it's no time like the present. Okay, all you have to do, it tells us what we have to do very clearly in Romans, the 10th chapter, 8th through the 10th verse. And I'm going to just go ahead and I'm going to paraphrase it a little. I'm going to quote some of it, but I want you to read that when you get a chance because you need to read for yourself. In Romans the eighth chapter, in Romans the tenth chapter, the eighth through the tenth verse, it says in the eighth verse, "What saith it? The word is nigh thee, even in thy mouth, the word of faith which we're preaching." What am I talking about today? I'm talking about faith. That's what I'm talking about. Faith. It said, "For God so loved the world." We're going back to John three sixteen. For God so loved the world that He sent His only begotten Son, that whosoever, whosoever Believe it, faith in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So then it goes a little further into the ninth verse. It says, if you believe, okay, if you believe God sent his son Jesus and raised him from the dead, if you confess with your mouth and believe, you are saved. That's what it says. It doesn't say there's a waiting period. Hey, I believed on Jesus on 522. At 6, 620, I believed on him, but I'm going to have to wait until the church opens up so I can really be saved. No, that's not how it works. You can get saved in your living room. You can get saved at the mall. You can get saved in your car. Wherever you confess and believe, that's where you can be saved at. Now, if you've done that, I need you to do a couple other things. Find a Bible-believing and a Bible-teaching church. The people who are watching this video or who shared it with you, they can point you that way. If you came across this on your own, all you have to do is ask God. Say, Lord, help me find a church. There's tons of churches streaming right now. You have all the choices in the world. You got it on the internet, i.e. here, Facebook, Twitter. You got um, YouTube. You got it on cable, different channels. Okay? You have it on the radio. There is no opportunity. I mean, there's no excuse for you not to say you can't find a church. Number two, I need you to pray. I just talked about prayer. Prayer is communication with God. Lord, I thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We must have faith in God. That's what Evangelist Paul just put on the thing. We must have faith. Okay? And then I see Evangelist Thomas is giving me some encouragement. We must have faith. Okay? So, that's what I need you to do. If you've, if you've said that in your heart, all you have to say is, Lord, forgive me. I'm a sinner. Okay, I'll make it personal. Lord, this is Robert. Forgive me. I'm a sinner. I believe you sent Jesus. I believe you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, please be my Lord and Savior. If you said that and you believe it, you are saved. So I said Bible believing and Bible teaching church. That's the first thing I want you to find. Number two, I want you to pray. Number three, read God's word. This is where you learn about God. This is where you learn how to live a better life, how to live your best life. Okay, and the thing is, you can't just read about it. You got to do it. So guess what? We have to practice patience. 
Guess what? We have to practice, you know, hey, we got to watch how we talk to people. Hey, we have to practice not getting so wound up that we react too quickly. Okay? If the Bible tells us to be, you know, slow to speak. And I got to work on that very much so because sometimes I get a little like Peter and I get ready to go. And then once I've done that, guess what? I can't take it back. Okay? So, beloved, let us pray because I, I broke it down. I invited you into, you know, a relationship with Christ. That's what it's about. I offered you, I showed you how the plan of salvation work. We talked about faith. Okay? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. We got to have faith. Okay? And before we go on this Friday, I want to just say a special prayer for for everybody who's watching. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you right now. I thank you that my pastor came on. I thank you that these great women of God in the evangelism team, Southwest Agape Jurisdiction Evangelism Team, were with me. And my pastor, Pastor Kellen Brooks, from Pentecostal Temple Church of God in Christ, I thank you that they were on this morning, Father. Lord, I ask right now that you touch all those who have lost loved ones, Father. Lord, I ask that you release your comfort and your peace that passes all understanding, Father, because you're a good God. You're perfect, Lord. Lord, and you care for us, Lord. I thank you right now for that. Lord, and anyone suffering with the COVID virus, Lord, Lord, I pray right now that you heal them, Father, because I know you're still in the healing business. Lord, I thank you for those that you have healed, Father. Lord, you're a great and a mighty God, and we thank you for Friday, Father. We thank you for another opportunity. Lord, I thank you for these platforms that you've made available to us, Lord. And even though we're, we're shut in, we're not shut out, Father. I thank you right now, Lord. Lord, you're a great and mighty God, Lord. I ask that you give us holy boldness, Lord, where we can shake the world up and expand your kingdom. I pray this and I speak this in the matchless and the mighty name of Jesus Christ. I say amen and amen. And I'm saying right now, as I always say and I always close it out, God loves you and so do I. You be blessed.